I got rhythm, you got rhythm, we all got rhythm. In today's episode, I will be discussing with you the most primal, intense, propulsive element in all of music, the fascinating rhythm. Since the beginning of time, humans have expressed themselves through rhythm. There was always some kind of voice, a wooden flute, a log drum, and the syncing of these instruments with dance provided us with the very first form of entertainment, rituals, spiritual development, as well as the earliest forms of symphonies and ballets. Rhythm comes from the Greek word rhythmus, meaning flow, order, as well as soul. Cool, huh? Rhythm is the only element in music that is autosufficient. Rhythm is also the primal urge or impulse for us to produce music in the first place. Many animal species produce rhythms and melodies, but only humans can collaborate and sync through rhythm. This phenomenon is called entrainment, and it's what happens when two people are walking alongside in the street and they fall into a pattern, into a groove, into a rhythm. Contemporary musicians have wonderful control of time and tempo due to the use of sequencers and click tracks. But time is not rhythm. Time is constant and predictable, whereas rhythm is flow and uncertainty. Time is the yin and rhythm is the yang. Rhythm is an element that unites all forms of music, whether it's symphonic, opera, contemporary pop, doesn't matter. In songwriting, you have three simultaneous basic rhythmic structures. You have the rhythm or groove of the overall arrangement, you have the rhythm of the melody, and the rhyming of the words. You see, rhythm and rhyme share the same etymology. Rhythmus in Greek, remember? Rhythm has consonance and dissonance, just like a melody. Rhythmic dissonance is more commonly referred to as syncopation. And syncopation, it's placing the emphasis of the beat on the offbeat. So this is an example of very basic syncopation. So in this example you just heard of Michael Jackson, you have the emphasis on the two and the four beat with the snare drum. That's syncopation because the strong beats are actually the one and the three, which is where the bass drum is playing. So you have the boom, pa, boom, pa. And people clap on the two and four, right? Boom, pa, boom, pa, boom, pa. So that is a very basic form of syncopation. It's basic, but many cultures have trouble clapping on that two and four. I would have the hardest time playing the drums while the crowd was clapping. Boom, pa, boom, pa, boom. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> Another form of musical dissonance or tension is when you interpret a phrase by stretching its rhythmic value within that time frame. In that way, it feels like you're playing with time and it keeps the listener on the edge of his seat. So in this first example, you will see who was arguably the greatest drummer of all time, Buddy Rich, who played in a very standard rhythmic way. So you'll see his phrasing is quite on the beat. In the second example, you'll see the incomparable Elvin Jones, who played drums with none other than John Coltrane. In his solo, you will see him kind of stretch time, creating something very sophisticated and expanding the limits of conventional rhythmic phrasing. <laughs> So my music theory teacher, Moisir Santos, always told me that I had a solid foundation to become a composer 
through my understanding of rhythms while drumming. Of course, I never had an idea of what he was talking about until very recently when I really began to understand how rhythms can support, feed, and enrich a musical phrase. Take the famous polychord from The Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky. Now that is a very tense chord, okay? You have E flat 7 over F flat. However, if you just play the chord, it provides a certain degree of tension. But check out Stravinsky and his smile when he's showing you the rhythm behind this chord. I like very much this chord. Was rather new chord, you know? Or eight notes chord. That the accents were even more new. So by the use of those accents within the eighth notes, you can feel a much greater tension and dissonance in the chord along with its rhythmic structure. Let's check out the orchestra playing it now. Brilliant, right? Stravinsky was so ahead of his time, both harmonically and rhythmically. In fact, at least 70 years ahead of his time. Check out this other passage in the Rite of Spring where he's playing a rock groove. A basic rock groove later to be used by rock groups like Duran Duran in the song Rio. Many contemporary musicians and producers are obsessed with perfect time. They will edit their samples and other musicians' performances so that they fall always within the grid in their recording software. The problem with this is that these rhythms can sound stiff, kind of repetitive, dull, you know. So it's a good idea for you as a musician to train a lot with a metronome so that you have good control of tempo and also the musicians that record with you, that they have good control of tempo so that you don't need to edit so much. My personal formula is to use the samples that I use in my drum machine in perfect time and whatever I perform, playing the drums, guitar, whatever, will remain unedited. Samples are great for you to edit in perfect time due to their lack of transients. A transient is a high amplitude, short duration sound that occurs at the beginning of a waveform. So here is a waveform and here is a transient. Samples have evolved tremendously. However, they are still poor in terms of transients. Why? Because you're always repeating and triggering that same sample over and over and over again. So when you have human emotion and interpretation in a performance, even though you're repeating the same phrase, it's much richer in terms of transients because we never play the same musical phrase exactly the same way, right? Let's talk about time signatures. Now that is a very interesting musical term. In the same way that when you sign a document, you're leaving a personal imprint proving that it's you, time signatures can really dictate how your brain perceives a particular musical piece, how your body is going to react to it, your emotions are going to react. Western music basically gravitates towards 4-4 four, four time and 3-4 time. Eastern musicians, however, are very comfortable or as comfortable, comfortable playing in 7-4, 5-8, 9-16 and all kinds of odd 
rhythmic groupings. What truly matters, though, is that a time signature will provide a musician both with the quantity as well as the quality of the underlying pulse in a musical piece, as the formula itself shows. So in a 4-4 time signature, the top four means quantity, how many, whereas the bottom four expresses quality, what kind of note. So what you have are four quarter notes to a bar. This is also referred to as common time. Contemporary players and performers tend to freak out with odd time signatures. And this is where a single lesson that I had in Los Angeles with drumming god Vinnie Colaiuta became invaluable. When I asked Vinnie about how to approach odd time signatures like 7-8, 9-8, 5-4, etc. He said, listen, it's not complicated at all. It's all within the inner groupings of these time signatures. What you will have are groups of 1, 2, and 3. And everything else will be some kind of variation on top of that. So in this cue, taken from a movie that I composed for recently, you see a 7-8 time signature where I'm subdividing the eighth notes into groups of twos and threes. So once you understand these underlying permutations within a time signature, you'll be able to interpret them, improvise over them, anything you want. A fantastic tool for you to invest in and use in your film scoring compositions are effects. Some virtual synths in a DAW will come with their own effects that will create a pulse or a basic rhythm. Those are great. And I also really like to use guitar pedals. Guitar pedals are very inspirational. And three rhythmic pedals that you can use are, of course, delay, which is a form of echo, reverb, which is, you know, thousands, thousands of small echoes, 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 interacting and creating ambiences like you're in a room, you're in a hall, a plate reverb. This is all very worth researching. And also a tremolo. A tremolo pedal will oscillate the signal of your guitar so that the volume comes up and down and up and down so you can create different velocities in this tremolo which will provide great rhythmic effects. Another great rhythmic idea for your film compositions are pitched rhythmic instruments. So you just heard an improvisation in my pan drum. This one is using an Ionian tuning without the sixth degree. These are great instruments to provide pulse 
and different rhythms with pitches in a composition. I use it a lot in my film scoring. Quality picks. For today's quality picks, I'd like to recommend this fantastic instruction book on rhythms. Modern Reading Text in 4-4 by Louis Belson and Gil Brains. As you can see the book, it's written for all instruments. So it starts basic, gets a little bit more complex as, as you go along. And as you can see, there are no flams, rolls, drags. So you can just play like a major scale, minor scale while varying the rhythms. It's fantastic. Next we have the Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky. This is my favorite version. It's with the London Symphony Orchestra and it's conducted by Leonard Bernstein. This is an amazing version of that composition. And finally, I have Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. This is still my copy from when I used to live in Argentina as a, as a child. And this album is incredible. I really recommend you to check out drummers. Listen to really good drummers to improve on your rhythms, on your rhythmic ideas, etc. So thanks for watching. If you had as good a time as I did in this video, give me your like. And in the comments section, please share with me the resources, albums, pedals, plugins, that inspire you to produce great rhythms. I'll see you in the next video.